This game's called Age of Conflicts, and it is a World War simulator. We first must pick our land area. There's a couple templates, and I guess we can create a custom one, but I'm gonna go ahead and play in Europe right now, which looks pretty massive. So we first have to start off by creating our starting cities and civilizations. So let's definitely make a Rome on a European map. And of course, we need like a Madrid and uh, Portugal, maybe some Carthaginians and some Moroccans. France, Switzerland, Berlin, Netherlands, London. I'm like going back and forth between cities and countries. Sweden, Denmark, Norway. Way, Finland, Russia. Oh man, they're gonna be so big. The name actually looks a lot like Finland. Oh, and this is a wide European map. Doesn't include much of Africa, but there's parts of Asia here. The Austria, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Greece, Turkey. I want to rename all these. And I have like Persia approaching over here, Ukraine, Poland. Belarus. So I'm gonna allow revolts to happen, which I love in AI simulator games. Makes things so much more dynamic. So I've renamed these cities and civilizations to match their location on the map. At times, I'm using more historic names, and then in other areas on the map, I'm pretty much just going with their modern day stuff. So I did let the game run for like two seconds, which is why they've extended outside of their capital city, and they're pretty much gonna be filling up this map really fast. Also keep in mind, if one of your favorite nations isn't here, it's very likely a revolt will happen, and then I will rename them to whatever it looks like they might be maybe some sort of Viking Empire will pop up here so let's watch as all of these civilizations take over everything I'm really worried about the East are these guys gonna be super powerful and there already is a first war so Austria Hungary has declared war on Germany you can tell because this sword was going at them and then we also have something going on with Sweden and Norway why is Denmark eating up so much of southern Sweden too as you can see it's gonna be absolute chaos here in the very beginning there's gonna be a lot of minor wars but I don't think anyone's gonna die just yet I've also just turned on armies as well so that you can see where the AI is placing their units at. So if for some reason you see a front with no armies on it, it's a pretty high chance they're going to get rolled over. Germany has a ton of units, but somehow Austria has broken through and it looks like they're going for their capital. Let's see if they already get that. Is Germany going to be the first to die like super fast? We have a couple of peace deals that happened between Rome and Switzerland. Rome did not get uh, much of like the southern part. Switzerland's really thick. Now we have Rome and Yugoslavia going at it. Meanwhile, whoa! Austria, Hungary somehow just fell. How, how did that happen? They just completely collapsed even though they were literally surrounding Berlin. And I think that might have been because Switzerland also declared war on them. No, it says they were destroyed by Germany. I just don't know how that happened. We have a very historic looking Poland. This is giving me some Poland-Lithuanian vibes. Look how Poland has this front stacked with armies, yet they've got this stuff really thin over here. You better hope that Belarus doesn't declare on them. Russia and Ukraine are going to be probably the biggest nations in the very beginning, although watch as Persia picks up a lot of the stuff east of the Caspian Sea. We've got a little peace deal that's happened. Rome is looking really weak. A big war also happening in the Iberian Peninsula. Spain's now fighting in two different fronts, both Portugal and France at the same time. Maybe France saw how good they were doing. Wait, Finland was destroyed by Russia already? I missed that. And then the UK has destroyed the Dutch. That was really fast. So it seems like the AI is able to do some pretty good naval invasions. You can also see the UK AI trying to get to Norway after they've taken over like the Faroe Islands. This is a really dangerous and massive Russia, but I knew that that's what was happening in the very beginning. Another thing that's happening here is different government ranks all around the map. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but the crowns get bigger as we approach the east because they're just thicker overall. Like, I guess they're fancier government types. We have Poland and Ukraine going at it. Also the collapse of Belarus. Belarus fighting a three-way alliance, but now Russia is facing probably a communist uprising. This is this has got to be the Soviet Union. Old fam. All right, whatever fam. I'm gonna have to name these guys the Soviet Union. This is some really eerily similar World War One stuff going on. Problem is, are they going to be able to survive? Because Persia's really strong right next to them. I think they're already being attacked too. Wars and peace deals. Oh, someone's collapsed. Who is this that just collapsed? Germany got, they got another kill? It was Poland, of course, not surprised. Belarus was the one that uh, took them out on the east though this time. Poland actually destroyed by Belarus. So far, Russia has a lot to deal with over here. Also, if we look at the size, Russia is still far and away, even after that revolt, the biggest country on earth. It's Persia and Ukraine. Soviet Union, a brand new country, literally the fourth. They are the youngest on this map by far. They're only 20 months old. I think this game's going by months. Everyone else is obviously like 89 months. And the smallest nation on earth right now is Rome, Portugal, and Denmark. We now have France and Germany and, uh, Yugoslavia. Okay, there, there's like peace deals and then wars and then peace deals. I'm missing a lot. Of course, France and the UK getting into it. These are some really gross border. I wasn't sure if we were going to have border gore in this game, but it looks like that's definitely going to be the case. Oh, it's getting so real here in Portugal too. Please. I mean, Iberia, you got to clean this up. Morocco and Carthage are just chilling. Carthage 
actually looking very historic there too. They have Sicily and they're even getting a little bit of the boot. Yugoslavia has their armies stacked up. Did Germany, is that Germany that just fell? Yeah, Germany's dead. Germany was destroyed by Denmark. Again, someone can revolt and Germany can always come back though. Oh, the Soviet Union is about to collapse. Wow, Russia has everything. Their entire military basically stacked against the Soviet. They're literally trying to kill the Soviets as soon as possible and they are going to do it. All right, so this is a weird world. This is definitely going to be like a monarchist Russia, I think. Belarus has now fallen. Babylon was destroyed by Persia. Forgot to mention they were in the game. Belarus destroyed by Ukraine and Portugal destroyed by Spain. So we now have Spain who mostly, oh, I love how the city was burning right there. We have Spain who has most of this thing. What is this? Is this like a second city they have up? I like how it shows us total wars fought by each AI. So if Spain has fought five and they have a 5% chance of revolt, which isn't bad at all. That's very low. It's increased by declaring war and also slightly increased upon by attacked. And so far the nations that have been in conflict the most is actually Turkey and Yugoslavia. They've been at seven total wars. Most of the world has been in like either four or five. Yugoslavia also getting the heel of the boot. Rome is just barely managing to hold on, which is really impressive still. I don't know how they're doing that. We have a revolt in Ukraine, but I think they're going to crush that really. I mean, this is a pretty small area, although Ukraine was not prepared for this. So it's their chance to really get pretty big until like Ukraine remanages their front lines. Persia just chilling over here. Well, look at Russia go down. Look at Russia just completely. Oh, I don't even want to say it out loud. This is weird. This is getting weird. Ukraine has lost their entire army. I don't know why Ukraine put their all their army on the Black Sea. Also, Persia's getting a bunch down here around the east side of the uh, the Black Sea. I was going to say Caspian. I don't know why I was getting confused. And we have literally had an Ireland pop up. Ireland is here. So Ireland has gained their independence for now. We'll see if they can actually win it though. They got to keep their independence. Switzerland is looking huge here in the middle of Europe. Also, I think there's a big war for Africa happening. Switzerland looks like they're taking over everything. Yugoslavia is about to collapse at any point, although they have a heavy number of troops around their capital. They just pieced out. Somehow Greece is still alive. I don't really know how. Oh, Turkey's now going to war with Greece because of course Morocco definitely took some damage. Wait, is this, is there a peace deal? There's a peace deal for now, but Morocco's running out of military units and now the Swiss are moving. Moving into Iberia, Spain, with no army on this front line. They really got to move some people over here. Somehow Sweden is doing like their northern war, their great northern war, trying to keep Russia away from them. The colors keep changing. It looks like Sweden became like a vassal. Did Denmark die? I didn't even realize that. So Yugoslavia was in fact destroyed by Switzerland. That just happened right now. Is there another revolt happening? In the oh no, there's a peace deal. So Ireland has gained their independence. We'll see if Ireland can now destroy the UK from the inside. Norway and Sweden going at it. No one has united here the Nordic lands. Is Persia able to keep up with Russia? Look, Persia doesn't look so strong along this front here. Now, I think the AI has to keep some army along the coastline so they don't get like navally invaded because that's that is possible. Of course, unsurprisingly, Russia far and away the number one nation. And now Russia is going after this revolt, which I'm not even sure who this revolt, where this was. I think this is like a second Ukraine. There's also another revolt that's happening in like modern day Germany and Poland. I don't know who that came out of. Ireland's still fighting the UK over this way. And now Spain has just collapsed. I think this world's only chance of fighting Russia is actually going to be Switzerland. Also, so Morocco looks like they're probably going to like lose too. Spain was destroyed by Switzerland and then Turkey did take out uh, that revolt. Turkey's really kind of becoming the Ottoman Empire. Wait a second. Look at this. Look at Persia go. Russia's not ready. So what happens is when the AI doesn't have any army along the front lines, they're forced to peace out and then like an army is spawned on the new front lines. So I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. But let's see how thick Persia can get in the meantime. If Russia, I don't know how the peace deals really work. Also, could this mean that Russia might revolt? Russia only has an 8% chance of revolting. There's the peace deal. Persia, I think, is now almost bigger than Russia. They're not exactly, but it's basically tied for first and second. Switzerland now in third. The problem is, is Switzerland fighting like, yeah, Switzerland's fighting Rome and they're having issues. And I think there is a Brittany-France revolt. Ireland's lost their foothold in Scotland and actually they're getting pushed back Wait a second, UK has Northern Ireland. This is going to get awkward, isn't it? Also, even Morocco is jumping on board, bullying Switzerland, at least here in Iberia. Another revolt. Switzerland's completely collapsing. Switzerland at 13% chance. There's also three revolts that's gone on. Four now. We've just seen the complete collapse of Switzerland, like, overnight. And I don't even know who these new nations are that are popping up. Look at Rome. Rome's still surviving. Maybe I shouldn't have said that because I think they might just die right now. Let's see if Switzerland can clean up some of these revolts, but I don't really know. There's actually revolts happening everywhere. Russia only had to deal with like one. Was that one? I'm not even sure. A huge one here in Feinstein that Turkey now has to clean up and another huge Persian and Russian war out here this way. And again, Russia is not prepared. Russia is behind their own lines. I don't really know how that works. There's a huge encirclement, but it's okay, I guess. Oh, look, Russia has different settlements. I think when you get to get like this crown, 
you get to make more cities or something oh these are some gross borders out here in the east come on guys clean it up clean it up now persia sets their sights on turkey while turkey was trying to keep down the the balkans of course the balkans were giving turkey trouble switzerland has managed to somehow kind of be okay i mean they haven't cleaned up all the revolts just yet though persia looks like they are dangerously close to the turkish guy and there it goes turkey has fallen which means that this huge like balkan empire i think that's what i'm gonna have to call them they're gonna be okay they're gonna be sizable a united balkan empire i'm just asking this place to have like 13 revolts all at once we also have a spain out here that's still trying to keep back morocco carthage is also still going i'm surprised that no one is united africa just yet and switzerland still dealing with tons of revolts all over the place Brittany france is somehow still alive persia looks like it's probably the number one nation yep and by far who's gonna stop persia now western europe is so disgusting this is like the mongolian invasion but there's like two different mongols also russia now setting their sights on switzerland this feels very historical just how chaotic most of europe is and then there's like a huge Huge power growing out this way and again Russia slowly lose losing land I don't know what happened to the Russian army now the Russians have to deal with two revolts and Persia is already going after one of those revolts this revolt had no chance Persia dealing with their own revolt Persia has a 73% chance of revolting there's that is that's a huge number so it's very likely this place could collapse they're getting too big for the britches is Rome finally gonna die I wonder if Rome has benefited by being in this weird peninsula they're in a like highly defensible location look Carthage cannot take them out they're so close is it gonna happen do they have to completely surround the city or no I guess well we're gonna find out there's a peace deal Carthage might not be able to take out Rome because Morocco looks like they might take out Carthage so Persia did instantly take out one revolt now Persia's going after this uh, Russian uprising somehow they're keeping the revolts from happening and when they do pop up they just crush them crazy to think they've only had two revolts and they've gotten this big Russia I guess have only had three I thought they had a lot more Switzerland has only four. Oh, here we go there was a ton of revolts that just happened right here Persia is now dealing with three just overnight actually was it four look it looks like there's four actually look at Ireland still going Ireland still fighting for their life somehow but the UK holding it down with North Northern Ireland that's weird Rome still going and now Rome has a little bit of Greece somehow oh man Persia is struggling Persia look at this there's a new this is an Ottoman Empire basically it's literally anyone's game again although I think Persia is still pretty far ahead as number one yes Russia's still number two even though they look like kind of horrible look at this Balkan nation that's growing can the Balkans finally take out Rome is that a massive revolt is this this looks like a massive revolt I mean clearly it is because it's it has a weird name Ukraine is somehow back even there's a lot of uh, nations that have come back from the dead also Brittany France somehow still alive and they still control Brittany France oh finally Africa has been united okay it's about time so Morocco's looking pretty good they are doing a re reconquista of all of Iberia and they probably could take out Brittany France if they wanted Switzerland must be dead because I haven't seen them in a second Denmark also a trooper oh man Ireland Ireland huge uh someone Rome finally died the Balkans were destroyed by wait wait no 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 Balkans were destroyed by Rome this is the craziest Roman game I've ever seen Rome was so small for a long time there Switzerland finally collapsed Ireland also is dangerously close to London please I can just only imagine those memes again massive revolts happening in Persia what is even going on in Persia I don't even want to begin to imagine they got too big Persia's revolt risk is still 58 percent Russia also has it pretty high Ukraine's only at 18 Ottoman Empire and Ukraine are are now going at it and the Ottomans have Crimea and they're moving up south to north UK and Ireland still going at it again they peaced out and then they went instantly back into war that was only like two weeks later they know they can feel how close they are to London so it's interesting this game actually allows the AI to turtle really well if you're really small you actually survive for quite a long time those nations that get big are they gonna get it no they peaced out last second Persia now has been reduced to just back in the corner where they started and now the Ottomans again they know Persia barely has a front line, so they're just moving on in. Russia also pretty unrecognizable. This new nation, I don't even know what to call them anymore. Scythia? I think I'll call that like the old empire of Scythia. Russia getting very close to losing Moscow. This probably isn't even Moscow. There's two wars happening. Oh, you got lucky. Norway peaced out really early on. Norway having their own like great war of the north. They're going to try to get done what Sweden couldn't do. And I think the Ottomans are going to destroy Persia right now. They Persia has been destroyed. That was the number one nation. It really shows you that this game can throw like the number one empire like down like that Ukraine fighting for their capital now Russia looks like they might even take that back I don't know how Russia is even still holding on they better have a good relationship with Norway is this Sweden no that's like a revolt I guess that happened Sweden's long gone Ukraine is now dead so is Persia Persia's gone Ukraine was destroyed by Russia for a second time in this game and now Scythia looks like they might do the damaging blow Norway peaced out against Russia at the last second Ireland just cannot finish off the UK they're getting so close oh now they're doing their own invasion interesting that Ireland is kind of helping Russia out here 
There goes Russia. Finally, they have collapsed. The two biggest empires are gone. Uh, 900, almost a thousand years into this game. And let's look at Morocco. Morocco's still doing good. Only a 38% chance of revolt. They've only had two revolts so far. They've been at war 31 times. Can they finally take out Rome? I don't think anyone can do it. Rome is like the ultimate turtle nation in this game. The Ottomans now taking a huge bite out of the Scythians. Now the Ottomans going after Serbia, although they had a peace deal, so they might be okay for a little bit. Big revolt in Morocco, even though they started getting huge. We had two revolts happen here. I love that Rome is somehow still going. Ireland finally got the kill. Ireland finally took out London, and there's this new green... Oh, this Denmark. Okay, now that like a thousand years have passed and so many nations have died, I do want to see who some of the original countries still left. Oldest co country is, in fact, Rome. It's Rome, Denmark, Norway, and then that revolt, Ireland. It's actually a tie between all three of these top three. Let's see who lasts. I really just care about who lasts the longest at this point because this game, I think the map is too crazy for anyone to unify. Ottoman Empire is number one in terms of at least land area. Morocco finally fell. Morocco was doing so good and now Rome has to deal with a huge revolt. There's now a northern Rome and a Byzantium. They're going to try to take them out. This might be rough. They're going to get close though. Ireland doesn't even care what's going on in Rome. Ireland's just focused on attacking Norway. They really don't like Norway. Yeah, the Ottoman Empire destroyed and then a couple of revol revolts. Wait, no. The Ottomans are still here. Never mind. Maybe somebody else. I'm not sure. This nation is now known as Mongolia. They're looking pretty big, rising in from the north. I don't think... I think I might have just jinxed them. I watch, like watch... Oh, yeah. They're like having a bunch of revolts. They only have a 5% revolt risk. I don't know why they're having all these revolts. Brittany, France finally fell. Rome still going. And so is Denmark. So certain parts of the map keep these nations a little bit safer. Is Ireland even possible to take out? Look at this. They can just like stack all their armies. I think that is... That's got to be a thing. Three really minor revolutions happening in this African nation here. All three at the same time, too. That's just... Oh, and now they're fighting each other. What a mess. Look at how Mongolia has their entire army military stacked uh, in Finland, but then wasn't protecting what was going on here by this, like, Caspian Sea. So they lost a lot of their stuff. Will the Ottomans do it? The Ottomans are only 25% revolt chance, but they're getting really big. I wish there was a way to see, like, max of all time. Oh, n there is. Oh, that is such an amazing feature. So the Ottomans are still in fifth place of all time. This Persian nation got huge. I love these films. This is so cool. So Denmark and Norway, the only ones left. Oh, Rome died. Oh, I didn't realize Rome got taken out by the Ottomans. Oh, man, again, the historical references. So now it's just a race between Denmark and Norway, and these two are close to each other. I just want to see who's the oldest nation to survive. This Mongolian nation isn't doing too well. I'm going to name the nation next to the Caspian Sea, Kazakhstan. We need a Kazakhstan. Oh, Kazakhstan now pushing forward against the Ottomans. Oh, they peaced out. So strange. They peace out and then go back to war instantly. There probably needs to be more time, like, in between that. The AI can't, like, peace out and just do it again. Like, at least give them, like, five seconds or something. And now the Ottomans are collapsing and everyone is in on it. Literally everyone. So there goes the Ottomans. Ireland finally has a foothold somewhere else other than, uh, well, just, like, the British Isles. So they have Normandy. They never got anything inside of Norway, I don't think. I think Ireland's gonna be impossible to take out because their capital's way over here. And something I've noticed about this game is it's all about turtling. Rome was able to turtle. Denmark was able to turtle. I guess, to an extent, Norway, too. I don't really know how they're gonna get to Denmark. They're getting very close to Copenhagen now. So Rome Russia had a good chance because they were, wow, there goes the collapse of Mongolia and the Ottomans at the same exact time. This is just scary. So how much is their revolt risk going to go down with this? Not too much. It's only 19%, 17%. These guys are only at 15. So these nations can grab a lot of land over here, but because they're in the middle of the open, they collapse easier. When the countries are smashed in a good spot, like Morocco was even, makes it a little bit more difficult. Is this, what in the hell is going on? What is this nation? Oh, that's Kazakhstan taking over half the map. Is that the biggest so far? Kazakhstan is now officially the biggest nation that's ever existed in this world, but just barely. They're at 31% revolt risk. That's, I think, still pretty low. There's literally a wall of Kazakhs just, like, forming. Or, like, it's just a huge wall. The only thing that can stop this force is some sort of revolt. Algeria now, like, moving in through this way to grab the Balkans. Then we have, like, the three-way going on. Denmark, Norway, Ireland. Denmark's gonna lose a lot of land, though, right now. Ireland ended up being one of the, even though they weren't a starting nation, in the top three oldest nations. That's pretty amazing. And there it goes. I knew it was gonna happen. A ton of revolts into Kazakhstan. And it is it it is a ton. We also have Estonia out this way. Look, this revolt had its own revolt. I didn't know revolts could have their own revolts. And just like that, there goes Kazakhstan. Look at all of these nations that they've taken out. Are these all the deads? The 
the dead people? This also might be the end of, oh, it is the end of Norway. It is the end of Norway. Norway is dead, and now it's just Denmark is the number one nation, the oldest nation, I should say. Denmark has beaten Norway by at least 100, although Denmark might die. Even though Kazakhstan's dealing with all this, and it looks like they probably will die, they are in a good location to stay safe. Like, it's like hidden behind the Caspian Sea here. This game's all like about the placement of your capital city, it seems. Denmark really not trying to die. Denmark has so much of their forces. Ireland now has almost all of northern France, the lowlands, and a lot of Germany. Ireland is now trying to take out Denmark. They're going for the only, like, the only spot that matters, oldest nation in the world. They gotta kill Denmark and then survive for even longer. Denmark has an 85% chance of revolt. There's already been five revolts, which has really hurt Denmark so far. Ireland, on the other hand, has only had to deal with one. Kazakhstan. Poor Kazakhstan. A total of 11 revolts throughout their history, but 58 total wars fought. That's crazy. That's more than Ireland, who's been around for a long time. Of course, uh, Denmark is number one. 93 wars fought, and they're still going. Ireland has officially even outlived all the original nations, even though they themselves are not an original nation. Algeria also doing pretty good, eking their way into the top 10. Algeria really hurting Ireland right now, pushing them all the way back to the British Isles, and there's still not even a nation close. Oh, we finally have our first Western power. Look at that. Algeria is actually in the all-time list already, and it's out of Western Europe. No one has gotten that big. I think all of these nations have started off in the east. And Algeria only has a 2% revolt chance. How is that happening? Oh man, is Algeria going to do it? Algeria is going to end Ireland, possibly. It looks like they're not really well defended. They got both their cities back here. Denmark still going. And Denmark is looking really big too. Look at how close Algeria is to taking uh, Dublin or wh whatever is over here. And they're going to war again. They're, they really want to do it. But actually, oh wait a second. Maybe they're, they're getting pushed back out. Algeria is like the chosen one to finally clear clean up things in the west. Look how close they were to taking out these guys and then they pieced out the last second. Denmark is, it's ugly, but they're, they're still trying. Denmark is still really trying, although Copenhagen getting pretty close to falling. Both sides are going after this capital, but no one's managed to do it just yet. Of the Kazakhstan slowly rising up. They're now in the fifth oldest nation list. Also Algeria as well. Kazakhstan, who's still alive, once had the greatest, biggest empire, and it's still far away. Algeria's kind of gone lower on the list. So having to fight a lot of wars here in Poland. Does it happen? Is this it? So you have to get around the entire city, it looks like. I think you have to completely surround. Yep. You have to, oh, oh, that was not their, do you have to just touch it? I'm not sure. Ireland, unfortunately, has finally fallen. That was the coolest AI nation. I didn't even spawn them myself. Denmark has won. They are the oldest country. Which is funny because I think Denmark has the oldest flag, right? I just like the way this game keeps track of all the different wars that's go that goes on. Like wars and age. Like that's one of the coolest features about this AI simulation. I'm not used to seeing that. Also the number of wars and revolts they face. Is Algeria the one that does it? Does Al Algeria also takes out Denmark? I think they just have to get three next to the capital and then they fall. Algeria at 25%. They're also maybe about to take out another nation. Look at all the nations they've killed so far. Yep. There, uh, there it goes. Boom. Another other country is, is dead. Is this it? Is this finally it? Oh no, <laughs> it wasn't it. They weren't even close to huge revolts just happened in Germany and in the UK. Ireland gets their revenge. Maybe even Denmark gets their revenge. Algeria is going to end at being an all-time third, but they were still not as big as Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan also about to die, sadly, but they had such a great history and another revolt now in Iberia. Really like this game. I'll have to do another one except without revolts and maybe one on a world map to include a lot more nations. And big thanks to my wife hates this part. My name is Walter Hartwell. White. Drew's Argentinian the Polish, grandpa, Lithuanian, California Pamela, and Nevada Mexico, bring back Poland ball. The Mexican is dollars is a lot. Chris Dickens, Sam Sebastian, Evan Price, Gamer Space Period, Robert Pendleton, Matt Phillips, Ron Jeremy, and Why am I doing this?